Let's talk monitors for a sec. Now I'm not talking about televisions. I'm not talking about your standard office monitors that are 55 hertz square screen and just terrible. I'm talking gaming and in particular, AOC gaming or Aegon by AOC. You see, there's more to this than just a monitor. Yes, it's elegant. Yes, it's pushing 180 hertz, one millisecond response time, all built within an incredible 34 inch, 1500R curved radius, ultra wide 3440 by 1440 resolution, WQHD VA panel. So what's the catch? Are you gonna have to remortgage your house to buy this thing? Are you gonna have to sell a kidney? Well, the answer is no, neither of those things. This monitor is the CU34 G2XP BK, a 2023 revamp of the 2020 144 Hz one, which was also named CU34 G2X. But this one is the XP BK. Confusing, I know. But funny enough, this new revamped model is only coming in at 370 pounds on Amazon. There'll be a link at the top of the description if you want to actually go and check that for yourself. But now let's actually dive in to see if it is the monitor that you need. But before we do start, I just want to say this was sent out by AOC. So they have no input on my thoughts and my opinions. And another clarification, this is not an eSports monitor. This is for more of your casual gaming sessions. So now with all that being said, let's jump into some of the specs and see if they actually live up to their name. Now this monitor is a VA panel and we all know VA screens are not the best, but they are budget friendly, hence the price on such a powerful machine. So looking at one of the specs, it is classed as a 4,000 to one contrast ratio. But within the test, I actually saw this thing hit over 6,800 to one contrast ratio at 50% brightness. When it was at 100%, it was still at 4,900. We can say with the contrast ratio, that lives clearly up to its name. Well, even more than its name. But I wanna jump over to the other side, not the contrast, but the one millisecond response time. This bit didn't do so well. So I used the UFO test I don't know if you've ever seen this thing, but it will show you response times, it will show you ghosting, it will show you all these things within the screen itself so you can see it with the naked eye. Now, ghosting was an issue, but obviously with the gray to gray, it did dull it down a little bit, but you could still notice on some of the dark areas a little bit of ghosting. On the lighter areas, it wasn't so bad. It was more of one frame compared to the dark sections, which had more of a three to four frame ghosting behind. But that gray to gray does help definitely with a little bit of that overcasting. But with the response time, I could only see it getting to around 2.8, 2.9, which alas, it's still good for a gaming monitor. Also, while it's kicking out 180 hertz, it is a very smooth gaming experience. And that's coming from a guy that used to play on a 60 and 75 hertz monitor. So for me, that alone, that was, that was a huge improvement. Now, when it comes down to the nits of brightness, this is classed as 400 nits of brightness. I unfortunately don't have the technology to test this. So with some research and looking at some other people's comments, I've found some answers roughly around the same results to give you more of the facts instead of it being just off a spec sheet. So on research, it's claimed to have hit 350 with a brighter ratio at the top of the monitor while getting 18% darker as it reaches the bottom right. So what I'm saying is the top of the monitor is coming in from zero to say 4% dullness. As it breaks down to the bottom right corner, you're getting 18% of a darker screen resolution from the nits, if that makes sense. But as a lot of people have mentioned and that I've noticed myself, you can't notice it with the naked eye, but it is definitely worth a mention. Now with the menu on board, there is buttons at the bottom of the screen. It is a little bit fiddly to navigate. It does take a slight second for the menu to register that you've clicked it. So you can't quickly just go and change your settings. You do have to sit there for a while, click it, wait a while, click it again. But once they're set, they're set. You rarely will need to ever actually go back into your settings and change anything. Now there's one button that I personally love that is built within this monitor, and that is the always on crosshair. I always find this thing to be a godsend. When you are playing a hardcore game where they take away the mini map, your crosshair, the whole HUD, if you will, having that always on crosshair just gives you that slight advantage. I'd go with a piece of sellotape on a private match and put a Sharpie dot on the sellotape to find where my crosshair was. When I went into a hardcore game, I could dominate. I no longer need to do that. And that is a mwah, chef's kiss from me. But if you don't like to use the buttons and you rather a program, there is AOC's G software. I do prefer to use an onboard menu when it's there. So that I actually have less applications downloaded on my PC. Now the ports on the monitor on the back are coming in clutch. You have yourself 
two HDMI 2.0s and two display ports. And I've actually found that I have to use the display port to maximize the refresh rate and the curvature of the screen. On HDMI, for some reason, it wasn't picking it up as a ultra wide. So just keep that in mind if you do only have HDMI cables. That might've just been on me, but I personally couldn't figure out how to fix it. So I am using a display port. Personally, I actually rather a display port just because it feels a bit more sturdier than a HDMI slot. And then you obviously get your four USB slots with the yellow one being for charging. And now for the stand that was supplied with a monitor, it allows you to adjust the height, the tilt and the rotation. But I obviously have put it on a dual stacked monitor mount because I feel like it looks a bit more aesthetically pleasing than the gamer stands most monitors come with, with the sharp legs that take up quite a bit of room. But again, that is my personal preference and what I prefer on my setup. But overall, it is a perfect budget monitor for those out there that wanna try and get the best out of their gaming experience. And with it being a 1500R curve, you just feel so immersed within the game itself. Now, personally, I recommend this monitor if you're looking for a budget-friendly curve monitor that has a good refresh rate and it's still got a decent response time. Obviously, it's not what they've quoted, but I mean, you're not gonna notice that millisecond difference. So for the price range that you're looking at here, definitely, definitely worth it. But I also recommend you to go and head over to AOC's website where they have a crazy amount of monitors and screen sizes, refresh rates, OLEDs, and even displays dedicated for esports with a 360 hertz monitor. But I wanna hear your thoughts, so leave them in the comments below. Would this monitor upgrade your setup or is your current monitor that you're using already the bee's knees? And if I've missed anything at all on this monitor that you would like to know, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Cause I'm always here to lend that helping hand if needed. And with that being said, hope you can help me by leaving a like, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. And always remember, capture, create, captivate. And I hope to see you all in the next video.